We're now at 11.10, which is the last lesson for Chapter 11, and we're going to talk about same area, different perimeters. It's very important that you saw all the videos for Chapter 11, because this is the last one. We're expecting you to know everything that we've talked about so far, and they're linked in the description if you need them. We can use perimeter to compare rectangles with the same area. We can create different rectangles with the same area. Then we can calculate the perimeters to see how they change. So once again, perimeter is the distance around a figure. It's like a fence around a yard or walls around a room. An area is the number of unit squares that are needed to cover the surface of the figure. So if the perimeter is the walls around a room, you can think of the area as the floor tiles. We can create rectangles that will have an area of 24 square units by listing all the possible factors that will make a product of 24. We could use 1 times 24, so we'd have a side length of 1 and a width of 24. We can use 2 times 12, 3 times 8, 4 times 6. Those are all equal to 24. That would be the area, one side length, multiplied by the other side length, a length times a width. And our rectangles can have side lengths of 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, 4 and 6, and our area will be 24 square units. The rectangle with the smallest perimeter will have four sides all the same length. And the rectangle with the greatest perimeter will have two sides that are much longer than its other two sides. So let's look at this. This is a square, which is actually considered to be a rectangle, and we'll talk about that more in Chapter 12, our next chapter. But it has a perimeter of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 units going around its outside edges. And this one has a perimeter of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 units. And look, the one that has the two long sides, it has a larger perimeter. Now before we do our next word problem, I want you to remember that whole numbers are counting numbers. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and it goes on forever. Okay? So remember that. They're the counting numbers. Mr. Lee is making a re rectangular garden to grow vegetables. The area of the garden will be 16 square meters with sides that are whole numbers. What is the least amount of fencing he will need? So to solve this, we can make models using 16 square tiles or 16 unit squares on grid paper. And we can make as many different rectangles as we can and record their lengths and widths to write equations. So here I've got 16 square tiles and we're going to use one square tile for one square meter. You can see I've got a side length of 1 and there's 16 for our width. So our area is going to equal a length of 1 times a width of 16. That would be 16 square meters, 1 times 16. What would the perimeter be? Well, we know there's 16 going across the top because there's 16 unit squares, so that's 16. And we can either count each separate one, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. So our perimeter is 34 meters, but another way we could have done it is we know that's 16 up here, and because it's a rectangle, there must be 16 down here, and we could have done 16 plus 16, added them together and gotten 32, then add the sides, 33, 34. So we could have done it that way. So now we need to come up with another rectangle. 
We tried it with a side of 1. Let's try it with a side of 2. We can move these over to here. Try to do it carefully so there's no gaps or overlaps. I may not do it perfectly, but it'll be close. Okay, so we need a rectangle, so we need to make it nice and even like this. So now we have a side length of 2, and what's our width? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And you, and you know what? 2 times 8 is equal to 16. So what's our perimeter now? We've got 8 across the top, right? We've got 2 on the sides. That means we've got 8 on the bottom and 2 on this side, don't we? Because whatever this side is for a rectangle, that's what this side is. So we've got 8 plus 8, which is 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now our perimeter is 20 meters. When we increased the side length to 2, our width got cut in half, didn't it? Half of 16 is 8, and our perimeter went down. It got smaller. So let's try a length of 3 and see what happens. So we can take these. We'll move them over here and see if we can make a rectangle with 3 for a length. Uh-oh, look. We've got one left over. That doesn't make a rectangle. So we can't use a length of 3. That won't work. What about a length of 4? Let's try moving this one up here. And we'll move these up here. And we'll give it a length of 4 and see if that works. Look. We don't have any empty spaces. It did work. So we have a length of 4. And our width is 4. And 4 times 4 is equal to 16. That worked. Now, what's our perimeter? We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 going around the outside edge. That means our perimeter is 16 meters. So remember, we're trying to find the least amount of fencing that Mr. Lee can use around his rectangular vegetable garden. And the least amount of fencing will be the least perimeter. That would be this one, wouldn't it? So the garden side lengths will be 4 meters for a length, right? And it'll be 4 meters for the width. And the least amount of fencing will be the lowest number, 16 meters. So you can take grid paper and draw rectangles or take unit squares like this and make rectangles to find the dimensions of rectangles that will be 16 square meters for their area and then you can count their perimeter. We can draw three rectangles that have an area of 12 square units on grid paper. And we start with a side length of 1 and increase the length by 1 unit. So we start with a length of 1, then we have a length of 2, then we have a length of 3. So we increase the lengths by 1 unit until we find rectangles with an area of 12 square units. So with a side length of 1, we've got 12 square units going straight across, real long and skinny. If we have a length of 2 to have an area of 12, we have a width of 6. 2 times 6 is equal to 12. And if we make a length 3, then our width is going to be 4 because 3 times 4 is equal to 12 for this inside area. And the rectangle with the greatest perimeter will have two sides that are much longer than its other two sides. Look at the top and the bottom, how long they are compared to the, the ones on the left and the right. And the least perimeter will look more like a square. It'll either be a square or look close to being a square.
a rectangle with whole number side lengths will have an area that can be divided evenly by each of the side lengths. And take a look at the green rectangle. It's got an area of eight square units. Two times four is eight. Two, four, six, eight. There's eight square units. We can take that area eight and divide it by a side length. Eight divided by two is equal to four. It gives us that as our quotient. And eight divided by four would give us the two as a quotient. See how that works? And look at the blue one. It's got an area of 12 square units. Three times four is 12. And we can take the area 12 and divide it by a side length three and get the other side length. See, four. And we could take that area 12 and divide it by that side length and get this side length, 3. We multiply a length times a width to get the area. And we can find side lengths by using an inverse operation, division, because multiplication and division are inverse operations of each other, aren't they? So now we're going to use a little common sense here. Emma's making a birthday card for her mother. She has 48 centimeters of ribbon that she wants to glue around the front edge of the card. So what side lengths can she use for the front of the card? Well, if she makes one side length too short, the card will be too long and skinny. See, she could use this if she really wants to, but we need it to be 48 centimeters going around. We've got 21 plus 21, that's 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48. So that would be 48 centimeters of the ribbon going around, but I don't know if she'd want to use that or not. She can have a length of 8 and a width of 16 for her perimeter because 16 plus 16 is 32, plus 8 more is 40, plus 8 more is 48. We could do 8 plus 16 plus 8 plus 16 is equal to 48 centimeters. So if she made her card this size, that would work. She could also do a side that's 12, another one that's 12, this side that's 12, and that side that's 12. Because 12 plus 12 plus 12 plus 12 is equal to 48. So that would be 48 centimeters, or 4 times 12. So she could use this one too, couldn't she? She could actually use any one of these if she wanted to make a long skinny card, she could, right? She just might be able to write more and have more surface area to write Happy Birthday Mom on it if she used one of these lengths and widths. Both of these rectangles have an area of 18 square units. What is the perimeter of each rectangle? So we know the area is equal to 18 square units we see this is a side length of 3, this is a side length of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we know this side must be 3, and this side must be 6. And we can add the 3, the 6, the 3, and the 6, and that's equal to 18 units. This one has a side length of 2, 1, 2, and its width is 9. So we have 9 units coming across this way. That means this side must be a 2, and that side must also be a 9. And we can add 2 plus 9 plus 2 plus 9, and that's equal to 22 units. So they both have the same area. They're both 18 square units. 3 times 6 is 18 for the surface area inside, and 2 times 9 is equal to 18 for the surface area inside. But look, the perimeters are different. The one that's got two really long sides has the greater perimeter, doesn't it? So when, remember when you're trying to come up with different rectangles that have the same area, start with one unit on the side and make your rectangle, then try two and then three and then four and see if you can make full rectangles. And you also can remember that you can create rectangles that'll have the same area by listing all the possible factors for that area. If it has an area of 24, what are the factors that will equal 24? And you will have your side lengths. We're going to talk about geometry in chapter 12 coming up. We're going to talk about plane figures and angles and points and lines. I hope I'll see you there. Bye.